more videos, man. Like I said, you gotta do one every week. I'm working on it. Yo! Yo! You gotta do it? Yes. I saw the. You did an interview. There's like a black screen. I watched five seconds of it. Alright, guys. So, <laughs> right now, me and Dill, uh, we're hitting. No, I'm hitting chest. Dill's hitting arms. But yeah, this, we're gonna do a voiceover for. Basically, our workout today, as you saw, we were warming up. I'm bench here. <laughs> we were warming up 135, 225. Yeah, I'm hitting some, uh, some bench here, as you guys can see. I hit 225 for 45 sets of 15. And in between minus my arm day, sets. Yeah, yeah, minus 40 sets. In between my arm day, I had a push day yesterday. I just came in to mess around on the bench because Dave was benching. So I said, fuck it. <laughs> so here's my top set right now, which is basically what I have to do on the program. Work up to a top set this of three. This is a trampoline set of three right here. Yeah, very embarrassing heavy set of three. Like my strength is basically gone from being sick. So still got to do the workout anyway. But here's my first, second, third set of 225 for three sets of eight, which is also embarrassing. I don't want to talk about you it. You got all sets, didn't you? Did I, I help mean, you in the last rep? Definitely, guys, cover up the bottom left-hand corner of the screen at the end because they'll... Because my hand did touch that definitely bar. Definitely didn't yeah. touch the bar. My calves are looking There's big there, There's miscellaneous deal, though, hitting his 45th set of... Yeah, uh, you didn't cut those calves out? <laughs> no. <clears throat> All right, so next thing, the uh, seat of shoulder press with the dumbbells and then... And Another some, wild dildo. Look at me, wild, look, look, uh, look at me pulling your shirt back to kind of like <laughs> tighten up that. You can waist. see it. Yeah. Well, that probably looked really bad in the gym, but we won't, we won't talk about it. It's fine. We won't talk about that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm using probably like 60 pound dumbbells, which is yeah, horrific. This, this right here was just some curls. I did like three sets of 12 in curls. I need to hit some biceps. Yeah, because they're you small. Were putting, you were hitting and arms. then this right here, I overdid the triceps like I always do, <laughs> and I neglect my biceps. So this is some tricep the pushdowns. Triceps are looking huge. Three sets of 12 to 15 ish right there on mm, that. Something like that. Yeah, something Here's like that. me uh, doing a pec deck. I've never done this exercise ever, and like the new program has it, and God, this gives you massive chest pumps. Massive bumps. filth chest pumps. But I couldn't really get a chest pump today. I was so like mountain. No, you like, got a chest oh, pump. Oh, like, right I got there. a little chest pump. I little took fat my shirt chest off. right there. A little butt cheeks. Horrific cheek. idea. A little butt cheeks on your chest. <laughs> Oh, guys, don't look at this. See this looking yes, back to not looking that good. I don't know good. why it's like looks good. It looks good. Terrible idea. It's lean. Right, so it's lean. Here's me doing some um, lateral raises. Lex Griffin taught me a variation on this. Very, very good. I'll probably show you guys This later. right here is a troll set, but it's another uh, tricep exercise. I go close on this. The, um, what is it? Like the seated, yeah. well, I guess machine chest press. I usually go close grip for triceps on this. Yeah, you use free weights yeah. every once in a while, right? Yeah, like once a week, yeah. And then this right here, another tricep exercise that I usually don't do. <laughs> and here, again, we have the very confusing uh, back work on push dates, but that's due to me having what a... What the fuck's all that about? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Look at my pull-up footage. You could tell that uh, something's lagging a oh, lot. Oh, look, some back footage on the back there. Some rear delt Oh, no, wait. Is this some rear delt footage on the... Uh... Yeah, but we're going to go over the anatomy on next all one. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, last thing, oh, second to last thing is just... Last uh, chest exercise you did. <laughs> Yeah, the chest that's on my back, uh, lat yeah. one, lat two. And finishing up with some uh, French press with, once again, a some little quad extensions weight. and then some curls right here. You still hit your chest, right? Yep. Alright guys, so finally, me and Dill are finally doing that Q&A that I made a post about. How long ago was the post? The post was July 15th, which would make it roughly over a month. Literally over a month. A month. It's been over a, a month. month. It's pretty Period? much a month. Like month yeah. on the dot. Like what day is it? It's the 14th today. So yeah, right, yeah it's, it's been a whole month. month. Yeah. So, I got 2,367 questions. So, the way that we're going to go back to the two in the bottom, bro. Damn, 69. 69. 69. Alright, so what me and Dill basically are gonna do is we both have Instagram loaded up on our phones, like that exact thread, and right now I'm just gonna click low comment, just keep clicking low comments so you at the top. Yeah, load, load, we have to answer the first question. Whoever was first, that's yeah, they get their question answered. That's how it goes. Much. That works. <laughs> Let's see who it was. Let's see who the name was of the first person. God that's damn it. it. That's a lot of loading. Oh, I'm at the top. 
I'm at the top. T W Dobbs. That was the first question. T W. Wait, no. He asked another one where I am right now, but I'm not at the top. I'm at the very top. I can't get any higher. Okay. Your no, favorite. Wait, this is my top. Mr. Farsides. What do you mean it's your top? Mr. Farsides. Why? Hmm. But yeah, anyway, so my first question is by from T W Dobbs, and the question is, what's your favorite muscle group to train? I mean, it's a pretty basic answer, everyone says this, but I really enjoy training chest. Getting chest pumps are super fun. I like squatting, which is a thing that most which people don't Which is a strange like. thing, yeah. Very strange. I hate leg press. Yeah. I mean, I like squatting. Um, training chest is fun. Oh, back. Just pretty much, I'm trying to bring up my back a lot, and I've been hitting a lot more back lately. I'm getting a way better mind-muscle connection, so probably chest and back. That's a little uh, basic bitch answer, but yeah. For me, I would definitely say it'd be chest, and like he said, a little bit of a basic bitch, the, 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 little bit of a basic bitch answer, but honestly, for me, chest has always been like the most fun to train ever since I started training. You I just got the best you pumps. You grew an Arnold chest. Yeah, that. I grew an Arnold chest in like two weeks. Just like, it just happened. Like, wait, wait, I would just wait. press bars. Tell me what you used to do. Tell me about your uh, four by 16. Uh, okay, well, hey. This, I mean, okay, so what I used to do is I used to play football. I was like on the football team, and what would happen was we would have to go into lifting early in the morning. So I would come in early in the morning, I would go to lifting, I would hit my three by 10 bench press, right, with the whole team, then the whole team leaves, and I was like, I'm on Arnold chest. So I would literally, the whole team's gone, I would do like- Wait, wait just to verify, all you would train is chest at this point, right? Yeah, it's all I'm training. <laughs> Maybe a squat or two here and then a half squat here or there, just to be, yeah, squat through the team. But okay, so I would be, I would do my three by ten with the team. Everyone leaves, and then me and my one other friend would stay. We would do a four by sixteen on bench after our three by ten on bench, and then we would do like a whole bunch of push ups. Then I'd go home. I'd eat like a meal or two. I'd go back to the gym to like my personal gym, and I'd do like another like four by twelve, and then like another four by twenty on the bench press. And I do not recommend that. I had terrible shoulder impingement, but that's like that is that is how I started out. That's some my, CT uh, Fletcher overtraining. Like you, that actually, is, no, that's an actual snap overtraining. Like you yeah. modified your DNA yeah. to like. But definitely, yeah, I modified my DNA to have a big chest, pretty much. But my first question that I have on mine, which is weird because it's different from Dave's, is Instagram. What Instagram. were your benches, squats, and deadlift stats? Benches? How many benches? Okay, on um, all, all four of our benches. Okay, what was our bench <laughs> squat and deadlift when we first started? Oh, you're talking about the flat pad bench. And keep up the bench. good work. <laughs> and good far sides. Thanks, bro. But, do you want to start off? What was your bench squat and deadlift when you first started? I mean, I was already training at home for roughly, I'd say, three months before I actually got a gym membership and all I did was like push-ups, like calisthenics, like pull-ups, like stuff like that, like Mike Chang, uh, from Tower. But they wanna know, they wanna know, they wanna know the bench, the squat, and the uh, deadlift. Well, the when I get, time yeah, but, yeah, but what I'm saying is like, I did push-ups three yeah. months basically, once to the gym sign up, first thing I went to was obviously the bench press, and I remember hitting two tens on each side for a few reps, and I got like a 25 on each side for two, and then I hurt my shoulder. And squat, I remember I squatted, uh, 25 on each side for like maybe like set to 10 and I was hospitalized for a few weeks and I didn't deadlift until I don't know maybe like half a year into training. I would never really really deadlift. yeah, that's how I was too. my bench max was What was it? It was like nine a little bit under 95 pounds. My squat was like 185 which wasn't bad and didn't then, you say the first time you've ever deadlifted you pulled three foot? 300? I did. The first time I ever deadlifted, yeah, I, ever I did. The first time I ever deadlifted, I pulled 300, but it was like six months, or no, it was like four or five months into training. So like, I would, I was doing squats, benching, and I was gaining weight, getting bigger, stronger, and then I deadlifted. So like, that's why I was 300, but yeah. I probably couldn't have deadlifted like 275 when I was first starting, honestly. All right, guys, so it's been like 10 minutes already, and we answered like two questions, so we're going to speed this up. I'm at the very top right now, and we get to the top. And I'm just gonna keep scrolling down, scrolling up, 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 down, a few different combinations, and wherever my finger lands, that's the question we're gonna answer. So, um, right? Dude, what is that? That's just a bunch of like. That's a Chinese. That's, that's just a bunch of hearts. No, that's a bunch of uh, present that's, emojis. That's where we are. We're gonna go again. Mmm, right there. Okay. Do you ever drink soda or carbonated drinks, or does that interfere with your workouts? Uh, to my knowledge, carbonated drinks or sodas don't, I mean the carbonation aspect of a drink or a soda doesn't really affect your progress or your workouts or anything like that, but I personally don't drink carbonated drinks because 
I just don't like them. I just don't like the way they taste. No, I don't drink. Okay, what type of training should I do if I'm skinny like you were? They were pretty much like asking that to you, but I'll start the question off because I was also really skinny when I first started training, but basically what we both recommend to do when you first start training, if you're a skinny person, is make sure you're getting enough calories. And like that's the yeah. main, main thing is getting enough calories. Whatever you have to do to make sure you're getting that, you have to do it because you're not going to grow if you're not eating in a caloric surplus, eating more than your body's yeah. burning. So, so that, I mean, yeah, like, I, like training heavy, consistently, progressive overload. Yeah, so pretty much from like an absolute yeah. beginner standpoint, if you're like super skinny, you want to put on mass, you first have to learn how to squat, bench, deadlift, learn proper technique on like the big compound lifts, like I just yeah. said, and like the basic little accessories, like the right angles for your tricep push downs, that kind of shit. Make sure you're eating a truckload of food, like a ton of food, because that's the most important aspect. I mean, if you're not eating enough food, you're and if you need to, if you if you need to, I would recommend tracking it possibly on My Fitness Pal. It's like a free app. You could just get My Fitness Pal and track your calories, yeah. find out what your maintenance is, and then eat 500 to like 800 over that. Wait, who, did you pick the question? You picked uh, mine. Yeah. All right, your turn. I'm scrolling. I'm going down. I'm going up now. I'm going down. Right there. My name's Pal. Let's see. What is it that keeps you motivated to keep vlogging? Um, when it comes to vlogs, like for example, I'll pick a day where I know I want to vlog and I try to make that day like as interesting as possible by like obviously maybe like going to the gym or I don't know, just like some event that I'm doing, but other times vlogs are completely spontaneous and I guess like the motivation that I get for like doing vlogs or the reason I keep doing vlogs is like just like hearing the feedback, like seeing like the amount of views that they get, seeing like that people like them and I'm getting like death threats if my videos aren't long enough. So I'm like, oh. all right, I mean, I guess people, uh, people like vlogs. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, you guys just like motivate me to make vlogs pretty all much. Right. Um, all right, I'll answer this one. How do you afford all your juice? Usually, for me personally, like my mom goes to the grocery store. Like I still, live, <laughs> I still live at like my mom's house, so she goes to the grocery store and she picks up all the juice, so you have to ask her that to be honest. What about you? You buy your own juice? I get my own juice. I just go to Sam's Club. I'm gonna start doing that, be independent, buy my own juice. I'm yeah, because like your mom get the wrong juice, it could uh, cause it to be weird. Yeah. So does being fatter help you lift more weight? That's just one that I saw I have to answer. Yes, it does. My friend Elliot knows a lot about that. All right, so <coughs> best food to eat to bulk. So I can give you like a black and white answer of like a calorically dense food, but I'm gonna answer it like this. If you want to bulk, right, and that's your objective, and you have a ruthless appetite and eating as much food as you can is no issue to you whatsoever. Then just eat whatever amount of food you want, any kind of food you want, just make sure that you're in your surplus. But if you have a horrific appetite like me, for example, and you're trying to bulk, you really, really gotta go towards those really calorically dense foods. And a lot of the times the more calorically dense foods are classified as unhealthy or maybe have a lot of fat in them, a little bit processed, but if you're gonna go down that route, definitely make sure that you're getting enough fiber, fruits, vegetables, all that stuff, and micronutrients. Yeah, I mean, and, and I feel like a lot of people wanna know about like specific foods. I oh, mean, for me, foods. well, I, I mean, for me personally, I would recommend, I mean, it's, it's gonna sell them or gonna sell them bad, but honestly, <laughs> if you're skinny, you're trying to gain weight, I would recommend things like definitely pasta, bagels with peanut butter. French and olive oil. Yeah, olive, olive oil, oil or butter, or whatever. Um, Pop tarts, like I like throw ice cream in your protein shake yeah. with your milk, with some chocolate syrup, or I mean, yeah. basically just foods like that. Running the McDonald's twice, two, three times a week after you work out, get a Big Mac and a large fry. Biscoff bagels. Yeah, Biscoff. I mean, I don't. Just get some people don't know about Biscoff, but you look should it look up that Biscoff. up. Biscoff. It's amazing to put on your bagels. Dude, I mean, like I was so surprised. Those bagels I got from Sam's Cup, 370 calories, slaps of Yeah, look, honestly, like me, what me and him used to do, honestly, this is how we put on all of our size yeah. and strength. And we never really wanted to talk about this, but honestly, I think like we, we both gained like 60 pounds of lean mass <laughs> from literally bagels and disc golf. We would be in school housing bagels and disc yeah. golf. We would, whoever yeah. can eat more in the day. I'd be like, yo, teacher, he's eating, don't let him eat. Remember, like, you all know that we, we both wanted to eat more bagels. Yeah, so bagels. I legitimately had a six pack of bags lunchbox, right? Like, this lunchbox has like specific compartments for your Tupperware, for your broccoli and brown rice, all that stuff. So I, just, I ripped that whole middle compartment out. I just put a whole sleeve of bagels in there, six bagels. Bisc off the fuck, just yeah. literally. So I'd be, i been coming to school flat. I'd be like, "Yo, David, need a bagel." Like, yeah, what are you gonna do? For like, our currency bagel? was bagels, pretty much. Yeah, like, like, what are you gonna do? The for US dollar meant nothing. 
I remember that, yeah. So yeah. definitely that. I mean, <laughs> macaroni and cheese is another one, like putting cheese on your pasta, macaroni, that's really good. How can I be as savage as you, Dylan? You can't. Right, next one. Man, create a music playlist at the gym, Shark's Spotify account. Well, I just read that like I have autism, but yeah, they're basically asking me, make that Gymshark Spotify uh, playlist. Dan Crane, the uh, head of sponsorships from Gymshark, he's been uh, emailing me, texting me, saying, get that playlist done. So I sent him a bunch of songs, but they were like all YouTube links and stuff because I didn't know that they have to be specifically Spotify links. So yeah, I'll definitely get on that. Yeah, I'll, Sorry, man. I'll probably, honestly, I might even make a Spotify playlist yeah. just because people ask me all the time. I'm just, I'm, and it'd be cool so I can have all like, there's a bunch of songs that I yeah. like, but I forget. I'm exactly. like, oh, like, oh wow, I love this song. You have them all right there. People would enjoy it. So I'll I'm, probably make I'm just scared of Spotify. What if they don't have like all the good songs? No, they, have, they, they will. There's just like a lot of like the songs in my original playlist, just like will they have like low key sketchy SoundCloud? I think you might be able to find them. All right, so the next question that we're going to answer is, I need a bodybuilding workout regimen. Help. Okay, we're gonna help you. So, what we're gonna do is link in the description the different programs that we recommend for people at different stages of their training because it is gonna be very different for people depending if you're a beginner or you're just hit intermediate ish numbers, whatever the case is, or if you're advanced, you wanna get stronger, bigger, whatever the case. So, you wanna start out with a beginner program? What we recommend? I mean, for beginner programs, I'd go for like a program that's a full body program that you're hitting pretty frequently. So, like basically a full body program three to four times a week, hit all your compound lifts, basically linear progressive overload. Yeah. And then once you milk out those new gains, then you can get into more complex more, yeah, more programs. complex programs. And what we'll link in the description is what we actually use, which is Yeah, now here, I'm gonna well, I'll, I'll, I'll say like my thing and you can say yours. For example, for me, this is how my training was. The first year of training, I was the most passionate human being in the West Coast, no, in my East Coast, we are the whole entire Coast. gym, right? Yeah. We're in the East Coast. Yeah. But I had no clue what I was doing. I was literally hitting a muscle group once a week, just kind of like, oh, perfect. Did you have the Ben Pulski for him? Yeah, like all that ben ridiculous Pulsky. stuff. And then yeah. I started doing Jason Blas program, like his novice five by five or whatever. And then I started eating uh, more calorically dense foods. I blew up once I hit my 225 bench, 315 squat, 405 ish deadlift. Then I went to a program that my friend Elliot wrote, like a beginner strength type program. Then once I milked my gains from that, I went to a more intense version of a program that Elliot wrote. And I've been on that for, let's say, one to two years. And literally in the past one to two weeks, Elliot wrote a third program, which we're currently on. Which we're currently on, but you could technically, like if you're more of an advanced lifter, you could run either of the, like, the newer programs yeah. you ran, like the one that we were running before or the new one. Either of them are really good yeah. for advanced, but I just like I just want to say yeah. just to clarify really quick that third program, right? Even though yes, it's like oh the new third program and it got announced like everywhere and everyone can just have it for free. Like I just want to specify like that program was like specifically written towards me. That's why it has just one leg day. That's why there's back work on push days and yeah. yeah so if you want to run it, basically maybe throw in another leg day if your legs are lagging. Well, no, or another, take out that back yeah, or another thing. Days. Yeah, another thing I was gonna say is if like. If you're gonna run that program, I would definitely recommend, like maybe in, like on those push days where it's where it has back accessories, to take those out and replace it for um replace it for like group. yeah like or a lag muscle group or replace it for just normal pushing movements like or if you have whatever you want. Or, or if you have the the genetics, you want. just do a few push ups at night, you'll be good. Yeah, but you probably don't, so you're gonna yeah, run you one of these programs. You know, so we're gonna link the uh, Jason Block. We're gonna link. Yeah. Then we're gonna we're gonna link. Elliot's I'm, I'm first not gonna link the Jason Bob. There's no like link to it. I'm just gonna put like Jason Blaha. Blah, 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 All right. Look it so up. you're gonna put the J. Okay, we're gonna put the Jason Blaha program. And then the three first three program our friends. Links. Yeah, and three Dropbox links. The first one we recommend for someone who's been lifting for around a year to two, a year and a half, maybe two years, has somewhat of a strength base. What right around like maybe a two twenty five bench, around yeah. a three fifteen. And, and here's the thing I want to say. And around a four or five deadlift. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like a, a sharp 225, 315, yeah, 405. Be, For example, yeah. there can be people that, that have just horrific leverages on a certain lift, and that lift is just lagging like really behind, and your other two lifts are fine. So if you're in a situation like that, go ahead and like take the next step on the program because, I mean, that's kind of what happened to me. My deadlift was yeah. only 365 when I went into the first strength program, like the yeah. first Dropbox, like, and I'm not even kidding, in two weeks, two weeks in the program, I went 365 straight to four. Like our friend Christian, 
he uh, deadlifts like 695 and he squats like 200, so it's just kind of like some people, that's just how it is. More like 500, 200. More like 500, 200, yeah. Yes, please. Not question. That one. That is not in English. This one. Ooh, that is that one. That one. I have a good one. I right, only get one first. Mm, that. Not in English. I'm Are you sweat right sweat. now? A little bit. I'm, dr I'm really. I'm, I'm not really drenched. But... Yeah, I got a pretty good question. How did you get into YouTube and how did you get sponsored? It's a pretty good question. So, I don't know if I ever like told a story online, but sophomore year, I was like training super, super hard. This is like just when I got into the Jason Blaha program and I was starting to make like really good gains. Um, social media wasn't really like big back then. Every now and then I posted like, a picture on Instagram, but I didn't have to worry about like making YouTube videos or any of that. So that's why I was like train, go home, eat, do my homework, go to school, repeat. So, I went ice skating with my friends one day. It was like a public skating. It was two hours long. That's how the session was. And at the very end, literally the last minute, one of my friends at work was like, oh, let's race. I was like, oh, yeah, 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 sure, let's race. So we get to the end of the rink, and as the Zamboni's coming out, ready, set, go, skating full speed. And when I get to the red line, I made a stride, right? That was like this, and like something happened. That stride was like too long, and I literally felt a pop right here, and I fell directly to the ground one of the worst pains ever and it turns out like when I got x-rays like the next day I broke a bone called my lesser true cancer it's like a little nub of bone like at the top of my feet yeah, like, told me it was something like yeah, 10 people broken yeah like 33 it happens like 33 people and like it's a really rare injury so like the muscle like ripped the lesser true cancer off so I was basically bedridden for like a month a little over a month like I could not do anything I had a bed right that's all. The I'm leg doing. picture, remember? Yeah. That's I remember. Well, I'll show a picture right school. now. This picture it was three weeks after my injury. That's much more. So when the picture you just saw, I was literally sitting in my classroom, and I think one of our friends got had that picture, and they sent it to me, and I wasn't that close with Dave at the time, but I knew he had strong legs, and I saw that picture, and I literally had no idea what to do. Like I had to go to the bathroom and start crying because I just didn't know yeah. what. The, his legs were literally. They went from yeah. like large legs for like his size to. Smaller than yeah. like the average. All right, so the camera just died, and I had to like bring the SD card upstairs, find out where I was at. So basically, I'm gonna continue my story. So I was injured. I broke my left trochanter. I was in bed for a month and a half, pretty much. Couldn't leave bed whatsoever. I had to get food brought to me. The only time I would actually leave my bed was to go to my bathroom that was 15 feet away. That would take me 15 minutes to get there. So I was bored out of my mind. So I figured, hmm. I think I'm gonna make a transformation video. Like I was inspired by Aziz's transformation video, the like the 16 minute one where it's basically picture, 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 picture with music. I kind of like the way that was, so I made mine based off of that, like based like off his inspiration pretty much. And I made the video, I uploaded it just for like shits and giggles for complete fun, like not serious at all. And then it was slowly, slowly accumulating views over like I'd say like six months, and it was kind of like the graph was like this in my YouTube analytics, and literally one day. Out of nowhere. That's how it happened? Oh, that's what happened. Well, more like this, but yeah, so it just started like blowing up in views, and right now it currently has like 3 million views. And basically, fast forward two years from that moment, I was like, hmm, wow, like this transformation video got like a lot of views, and my physique's gotten so much better since that point, so why don't I make another transformation video? since I have a better physique and I actually use music that's not copyrighted so I can make money off that video and hopefully if I make enough money, I can potentially buy a camera and buy a few little gadgets to start my YouTube channel. So yeah, that's what happened. I'm very, very thankful for that. Look, I'm very, very thankful for that. The transformation video got a damn, 400 million views, but a damn lot of views. So I was able to buy that uh, Canon 70D right there and I just kind of like, just started like making videos and yeah, that's pretty much what happened. I just wanted to kind of say like, on a second note from like with the transformation thing, a lot of people ask me all the time like if I'm gonna make a transformation, they tell me I should make one and I kind of just want to clear that up because I plan on making one definitely, but I just want to do it a little bit further into the future because I'm not really gonna be like too like super lean this winter and I want to get like super, super shredded next summer and kind of have those pictures and videos of me being like really lean towards the end of like the transformation yeah. video. So I'm gonna wait probably like around another like nine, 10 months before I make Oh wait, wait, I gotta, I gotta answer the other half of this question. I completely mm -hmm. forgot because I have to go upstairs. How did you get sponsored? So basically one day I logged into Gmail. I saw I got an email from Gymshark, specifically Dan Crane that had a sponsorship. So basically 
blah, 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 blah. We want to, like the typical message, like we want to sponsor you, this is really, really cool, like I'm gonna send you some clothes, kind of like informal at the start, and they just sent me a truck of clothes, and big old truckload. Truckload of clothes, and yeah, yeah truckload. that's pretty much how it started. The rest is history. Good job, brother. Hey, Dan. How to get that V shape. V shape referring to V tape referring to the shoulder to waist ratio, whereas Robin likes to say clavicle, shoulder to clavicle, clavicle yeah, shoulder to clavicle. ratio. Wait, Wait, I think you're, where are your clavicles? I want to clear this up. So shoulder to clavicle, you mean clavicle to waist? I mean waist to clavicle. Okay, there you go. But we need shoulder to waist for this example. Okay. But yeah, pretty much, here's the thing. Uh, the, like, bad shit, like simple truth. V taper, a lot of it's genetic. Like for me personally, I have a tiny waist, which makes my shoulders look super wide, so I could have, like I'm always gonna have a V taper. There's other people with different genetics by like having like super, <coughs> super wide hips, narrow shoulders, and like in that scenario, you obviously have to really build up your upper back or your upper body. Your delts. Yeah. Your you delts. Know, the, well, the main thing in the V taper is like, Having yeah. massive delts and ha and trying to have the smallest, most shredded midsection, yeah. and obviously from the back, having a big, wide upper back, like big rhomboids, traps, thick lats, like wide lats, that's pretty much going to give you the V taper. But like, yeah. I mean, most of it is honestly going to be genetic. Like, if you're training how you're supposed to be, yeah, if you're on a you're balanced gonna, program, then you're gonna you're gonna be getting the the best V taper you could be getting, honestly. So, just worry about training and eating right, and that V taper will come. Yeah. What are your measurements, including waist, quads, arms, and chest? I feel like a lot of people ask this question, so we should answer this question. <laughs> right. Ooh, what a great For idea. me personally, my waist is like 19 inches. My arms are like 18, and then, all right, no, all right. So for real, my waist. My waist is right now probably like 31 and a half. My quads are like 25, and then my arms with no pump are like 16 and a half. What else was, and then chest is like 44 and a half. For me, I don't know, my waist is probably 30, I'm not sure. Arms, 15 and a half, 16, they're pretty small. And you're I'm 16, really... you're 16. If you're not flat, if you're flat to the bone, yeah. that's different. Yeah, that's all. all the other stuff I don't really know, I've never measured it. Why don't we just like, we don't even have to look at the thread, just literally rip through the cookie cutter questions. Okay, okay. currently six foot two, maybe six foot three, I don't know, last, last six time. Six foot like, three. Six foot two, like something like that. Um, a few weeks ago, I was like 192, and now I'm 185. That was really depressing. Yeah, so for me, my height is, I'm right around 5'8 eight to 5'8 five eight and a half, and then my weight fluctuates between like, 183 to 186 right now currently, but I plan to get up to like around 195 this winter. Hopefully, if I don't have David Lade syndrome, <sighs> can't gain weight. Here's a really good question: a fire fire punch emoji. So honestly, how I would answer the fire fire punch emoji would be, I mean, like this emoji, emoji, and then I would kind of do like that sword emoji. No, well, they're saying fire fire punch emoji. I how do you feel about the fire fire punch emoji? Honestly, honestly, I would put the fist. Between the fire, honestly. Oh, absolutely. Fist between the fire, period. Next yeah. question. Next question. Who inspired the two of you to start lifting? Um, for me, I mean, I was already lifting. I mean, the way everything started was I literally, I came home one day, type of chest workouts, saw a bunch of my chain stuff, started doing push-ups at home. Then I saw Greg Plitt as a 13, 14 year old. <sighs> Motivated me a lot. Uh, then I found out about Z's later. Obviously, that motivated <laughs> Motive hated you. A lot. And I don't know, pretty much yeah. Good. For me personally, it wasn't really any famous person in the fitness industry. It was honestly any one of my football team that I saw that I was like, wow, like I wanna I wanna look that big, like I wanna be that strong, or someone I would see like at wrestling, or whatever the case was, just people growing up that were from around my community that I saw was big and muscular. And I, like I said, people from around here, because when I first started, I really, I mean, I would look at people on the muscle, uh, what is it, like muscle farm, like all those, what are the, I don't even know, I need to come, like, I, I'd look at people on my protein bottle. Like, <laughs> I'd look at people on my protein bottle. be like, oh, he looks big and juicy, but now I realize I don't want to look protein like look on it. All right, I'm going to bring this question out real quick. I would like to know how your training powerlifter interlace your training bodybuilder question on those. 
He's with, saying, how does your power? Yeah, I, I know what his question, but basically, I think I said this before in a different Q&A, I'm going to say it super quick, it's not black and white. A lot of people like to think, oh, if you're a power, you come in, you hit your seven sets of one, you go home, and you have a terrible physique. Mm. And a lot of people think all power to just come in, I mean, body will just come in, just do a bunch of volume, which is kind of true most of the time. But for me, I come in, I do my powerlifting work, and then once I'm done that, like, bodybuilding accessories. So there you go, best of both worlds. Pretty simple. Do you do any cardio? <laughs> no. How long did it take to get your body to look the way it does now? <laughs> 1,432 and a half days. Next question. For me, it was like 997 days plus 933 days. Really? Yeah. It's all five feet. Just wearing a sweatshirt while burning, no, just wearing a sweatshirt while working out burn more fat? No, it does not burn any more fat. That's a massive misconception. It doesn't burn any more fat, but what it will do is burn more weight because you're gonna learn. You're gonna you're lose more water. You're gonna lose your temporary. Yeah, you're temporarily losing yeah. subcutaneous water. That's so a lot of people it. like to put on trash bags and go on the yeah. on sprint till they pass. If out. you're a wrestler and you're about to compete at uh, the Olympics, I do recommend that. But if you're just trying to lose body fat, don't do that because there's no yeah, real any benefit. any cosmetic gain. I don't know if that's right. We're any cosmetic gain from uh, you wearing a trash bag while running. We'll be temporary. We'll be we'll be back to normal the next day. So calisthenics or weightlifting? It depends. Do you like to be large, fit, and big, or do you like to be skinny and be able to do muscle ups? At the park with all your friends. At the park with all your friends. No, I'm just kidding. Honestly, some of those guys who do calisthenics are jacked, like actually stacked. But like, for the average no, person, I feel like a lot of people that do calisthenics also do. Dude, there's some jack dudes who just do calisthenics, like big, but they're probably on steroids. I don't know. I would recommend weightlifting if you're trying to gain muscle mass and strength. The most optimal thing to do would be lifting weights, not calisthenics. All right, guys. So I'm pretty much passing out right now. Like my eyes are like going shut. Like I keep falling. I'm about to have a heat stroke. Because <laughs> he's wearing some sweatshirts right now. We didn't think about it. It's really hot out in this garage. Yeah. So right now, pretty much, we're gonna turn the cameras off. Take till home. Come home. Pop the SD cards in. Get as much edit as I can before I go to bed and wake up, finish the video then if it's not done tonight, upload it to you guys, and then yeah. Go to bed. <laughs> and me? You wanna, you wanna close it, it out? You wanna, yeah, want you to close it out? You wanna close it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm.